Um, hello, guys. So you're welcome to uh, this lecture. And in this lecture, um, I'm going to cover um, a second part or a third part, if you like, of um, second order differential equations. Uh, basically, we want to look at the method of variation of parameters. Um, in the previous lectures, we've looked at the method of homogeneous equations. Um, and I dealt with the existence of Newton's theorems that cover homogeneous second order equations. We also looked at non-homogeneous equations. Um, I gave um, the superposition principle, the theorem that covers that, and then the existence of uniqueness theorems for um, non-homogeneous equations. And then the method of undetermined coefficients, which you can use to solve some non-homogeneous equations. That was also covered. This lecture is going to cover the method of um, variation of parameters, uh, which is a more general approach, actually, a method for solving um, constant coefficients, non-homogeneous equations. Actually, also for um, variable coefficients, we'll come to that later. Okay, so if you haven't looked at the, uh, the, the videos covering this, I have, I have made some videos already on, on these ones. You should uh, take a look at them, or probably, um, um, stop sharing this and then share uh, my YouTube channel and show you uh, where some of those videos are. Okay, so um, let me uh, quickly go through where um, my channel is and then I could try to share with you um, <clears throat> some, of, um, some of the stuff that I've already published. Okay, some of the videos are published on um, on second order equations. Okay, so let's see. I'm hoping that this will show up. Yes, right here. So let's share this. Okay, so if you go to my uh, my channel, my YouTube channel, you should find uh, these videos under Math Six Three Nine. So you should look at lecture four to seven. Okay, four covers second order homogeneous equations, and then um, the theorems. And then here I look at non-homogeneous equations and then lecture seven here covers the method of undetermined coefficients. Even though I did this for mass 639, you, can, you guys can still use it, okay? So you can use this to cover um, lessons on starting on uh, second order differential equations, all right? So you should, uh, you should look at these ones actually before you start looking at uh, variation of parameters. So um, I'll switch. Uh, stop sharing this and then I'll go back to um, sharing my um, screen on the, um, my slides. Okay, so we are back here. So we want to look at the method of variation of parameters. Um, this, uh, as I said, is a more general uh, approach. If you have a second order equation, A, B, and C are constant coefficients. Uh, f of t here is a non-homogeneity, all right? This is not zero. If f of t goes to zero, this, is, this becomes a homogeneous equation as I've already covered in the previous videos. So this is not non-zero. Of course, a is not zero as well because if a is zero, the equation reduces to a first order equation. It's no longer a second order equation. Okay, so you have an equation of this form. How do you solve it? Well, in the previous videos, we saw that if f here, it um, takes a particular form, a particular functional form, I should say. For instance, if it's a polynomial or an exponential function, a sine, a cosine, or a combination of uh, these functions that are mentioned, then you could use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve for the, um, for the um, particular solution, okay? But if f of t here is um, neither of these uh, functions, if for instance, f of t is a tan t or sec t or long t, you can't use the method of undetermined coefficients. So that is where the method of variation of parameters becomes more, uh, more powerful, um, if you like, um, a more effective way of solving non-homogeneous equations. So we want to look at uh, variation of parameters for solving such second order equations. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the plan. So to proceed, just like um, the method of undetermined coefficients, the first thing you do is that you solve the homogeneous 
um, the corresponding homogeneous equation. That is this equation here. You assume that f is zero, right? Put f to zero and solve this equation here. The solution to this will be the solution to the homogeneous equation, or sometimes called a complementary solution. So you should get when you solve this, you should you should get two linearly independent solutions, y1 and y2. And if you combine them, you get a general solution for the homogeneous equation, and that is given by this. Okay, where C1 and C2 here are constant. Now, to apply the method of variation of parameters, um, what you do is this. So the next couple of slides will basically walk you through the method of variation of parameters. What you do is that um, the method assumes that now suppose that for the particular solution, the C1 and C2 are no longer constants, but they are functions of the independent variable, in this case, T. So now we rewrite or we assume our particular solution to be of this form. Instead of C1, I'm going to have the W1, which is a function of T multiplied by my um, Y1 plus W2T times Y2. So this will be the form of my particular solution, which means that if I'm able, or if I succeed in solving for W1 and W2, then of course I get my um, particular solution. All right, then I can add it to the homogeneous solution to get a general solution. So the task here for the method of variation of parameters is how do you solve for W1 and W2 so that you get a particular solution? That is basically it, okay? So the approach is this. Since we are assuming that WP, this is a solution to the um, non-homogeneous equation, it must satisfy it right? It must satisfy this equation. In other words, if I find a second derivative of yp and plug it here, find the first derivative of yp and then plug yp here, I should satisfy the equation one. That is the point. So if this is the solution, is it must satisfy equation one. And so I can find the derivatives and plug it into equation one, as I just said. So first thing you do is you find the first derivative, right? If you go to equation one, you have a first derivative, derivative, you have a second derivative term as well. So the first thing you do is you find a first derivative of yp, right? Use a product rule and you get this, okay? You can rearrange it, bring this guy, right? And then that guy, and then combine the other two. So this is still the first derivative. Now, uh, if you want to find a second derivative from here, you could do that. But this is going to be a very long expression, right? So the technique for variation of parameters is that, now in order to reduce the algebra, let's assume that um, the first term here is zero. I mean, you could have assumed this is zero as well. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. You still end up with the same, um, the same solution. So to reduce the algebra involved, suppose that this term here, this first term in bracket is, is zero. So this goes to zero which means your yp prime is just equal to this term here. And then you can find the second derivative of that. In, in that case, you reduce the algebra that is involved. But you are not going to neglect this. We'll come back to use this. We we'll actually need to use this in order to get w1 and w2. Note that our y, yp here has w1, which is not known, and w2, which is unknown as well, which means we need two equations or two conditions to be able to solve for w1 and w2. So this equation here actually becomes one of the conditions or equations that we'll need, okay? Good, so back to the process. Um, we assume this is zero, so we know yp prime is equal to this, okay? It's equal to that. Um, so we need to find a second derivative, right? So use the product rule as well. So find the derivatives of this and you're gonna get this expression here. So now I know yp prime prime, I know yp prime, I know yp, I plug everything back into equation one. I've rewritten equation one here. So instead of y, I'm going to have yp here, a yp prime prime, this guy, you plug it in, that gives you this. y prime we know is this, you put it in there. YP, we know is this expression you put it and that should equal to the right-hand side, okay? And then you try to group terms. Note that uh, there's W1 here, W1, W1, you can pull it out. And then you have this expression in square brackets. You also have W2s, which you can pull out and you have an expression in square bracket, brackets. 
And then you have this last expression here, A multiplied by this is equal to F of T. Okay. Now here, things simplify greatly because remember that uh, Y1 and Y2 um, are the solutions to the homogeneous equation, right? Remember that we solve um, this equation here to get Y1 and Y2. So Y1 and Y2 actually satisfy this. So if I put Y1 here, this expression here should go to zero. And so if you use that, you know that Y A Y1 prime, prime plus B Y1 prime, prime plus C Y1 must go to zero because Y1 is a solution to the homogeneous equation. The same thing here because Y2 is a solution to the homogeneous equation. So these first two terms actually cancel out. And so you are only left with this is equal to F of T. And that is what you have here. You can divide through by A here and then you get that. Remember that A is not equal to zero, right? As I said previously, if A goes to zero, then you don't have a second order equation. You have a first order. And so you get a second equation. So we, we have two equations. Equation number five, from the assumption that from us trying to make the algebra simpler, right? The algebra simpler, we said this is zero. So this is one of the conditions we have. And then when we substitute the equation into uh, the non-homogeneous equation, we come up with this equation eight. So we have two equations here, two unknowns, W1 prime, W2 prime, which we need to solve for W1 and W2. So that is, if you like, basically the concept, the idea for um, the method of variation of parameters. So how do you solve this? Well, from here is actually uh, quite straightforward. It's algebra, right? Solve two equations. Um, with two unknowns, okay? So um, how we solve it here is um, we make W1 prime the subject and that, that is here, and then we plug it into equation 10, the second equation. If you do that, W1 is this, so you put it there, you have Y1 prime plus this is equal to F of T over A, pull out W2, and then you have this guy minus this term here is equal to F of T, um, you can multiply through by y1. If you do that, you get this expression here. And then you can divide through by this guy. And you have w2 prime is equal to this expression here, equation 12. Okay? So basically, it's algebra. Now, um, now that you have w2 prime, you can also solve for w1 prime. Remember, if you go back to this equation, we know w1 prime is equal to this expression here multiply by W2 prime. Now we know W2 prime, so you can put it here. If you do that, you're going to get, um, you're going to get um, this expression here, minus Y2 over Y1 multiplied by W2, which W2 prime, which is this, so you have that. Y1 cancels Y1 and you, you, are, you end up with this expression. Okay, so basically that is how you solve for W1 prime and W2 prime. Now we don't, what we actually want is W1 and W2, okay? So what you're going to do is that you, you basically need to um, find the derivatives, no, sorry, the integrals, right? This is W, uh, the W1, the T, right? So W1 will basically be equal to the integral of this, the T, and W2 will be equal to the integral of the, uh, this expression, the T. Now you can only do that if, you are guaranteed that the denominator here does not go to zero. It doesn't vanish, right? If it vanishes, then of course, this goes to infinity or it blows up, okay? It's undefined. So you, you, um, you have to check that this expression doesn't go to zero. Of course, A doesn't go to zero, so that we know that. Now, we also know that this expression in square bracket here in the magenta or reddish color here, this should not go to zero as well because this expression here is actually the Ronskian of Y1 and Y2. If you look at the previous videos, the Ronskian, if W1, sorry, if Y1 and Y2 are linearly independent solutions or linearly independent functions, then this expression here is the Ronskian and it doesn't vanish, okay? It only goes to zero if Y1 and Y2 are dependent variables, but they are independent, right? They are independent solutions too. W1 to the homogeneous um, equation. Therefore, this does not go to zero. 
because this expression here in square bracket, bracket doesn't go to zero, we can integrate for W1 and W2. So that is basically what you do. So from integrating 12 and 13, you get W1 to be equal to this expression, and you have W2 to be equal to that expression. Okay. So once we are able to integrate this, w, uh, this for W1 and this for W2, we go back and plug them into the expression for YP, the particular solution. And then we get our particular solution, which is given by this, right? And now we know W1 and W2 from these uh, equation 40. So if you like, basically that is the main idea, the main idea for the method of variation of parameters. So um, as you can imagine, one of the challenges of variation of parameters, even though it's a more general approach is that um, these expressions could be complicated, right? Depending on f of t, this guy here could be complicated or this guy here, the integrand could be complicated. So that is one of the challenges with variation of parameters. Otherwise, the approach is straightforward and it is, um, it is um, more general. Okay, good. Now uh, let's, let's uh, summarize this um, procedure. So this is the procedure. You have a second order uh, constant coefficient, non-homogeneous equation. This is it. You want to solve for a particular solution to this. Uh, in order to solve for the particular solution, the first thing you do is solve the associated homogeneous equation. That is, this is zero. So put this to zero and solve for it. When you solve this homogeneous equation, you are going to get two linearly independent solutions, y1 and y2, okay? That, that we know, and that will give you the homogeneous solution, okay? But what you want really is the particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation, this equation here. So how do you get that? By the variation of parameters, assume that your particular solution takes this form here, where y1 is some function of t, multiply by your one of your solutions, y1, and then w2 is another unknown function multiplied by the second solution, w2. So this is our solution. But we don't know w1 and w2. In order to solve for them, you have to solve this, uh, this um, system of equations, okay? So really, this is, the, uh, this is what you need to remember or memorize, if you like. Don't memorize these guys. Don't memorize these integrals, okay? Uh, you, you can make a lot of mistakes by trying to memorize this. You see there's, for instance, this minus here. If you, if you forget to bring the minus, your solution will just be wrong, okay? So often it's easier to remember this because it's easier to remember this. And also this is easy to solve for W1 uh, and W2. So remember this one. So once you have your particular solution in this form, then write out this system of equations, W1 prime Y1 plus W2 prime, y2 equals zero and the second equation and try to solve this for w1 and w2, okay? Oh, uh, okay, basically that is it. Once you solve for w1 and w2, you go back here and plug them in here and that gives you your particular solution. Basically that is, um, that is it. So that is a summary of method of variation of parameters. Um, I will end this by solving one example, okay? The algebra could be very long, so I'm just going to solve one example to illustrate the procedure. And then I have some exercises that you can try, right? Some questions that you can try yourself uh, to find the solutions too. Okay, now, um, yeah, I've, I've made this comment already. So here's the question we want to solve. We basically want to find a general solution to y prime prime plus y is equal to sec t, okay? Okay, so since the uh, non-homogeneity, the right-hand side function, the f of t, is neither a polynomial nor um, uh, a sine or cosine or some exponential function, you can't use the method of undetermined coefficients. So you have to really use the method of variation of parameters. Okay, so um, that is what we need to use here. So we go straight to applying the method of variation of parameters. So first solve for the homogeneous part of the equation. When you solve this, this again, if you go to the previous videos, you know how to solve for the homogeneous equation. First, you need to get your characteristic equation, all right, by substituting this and that gives you R squared plus one is zero. So your R squared is uh, negative one. So R is plus or minus I. 
So from your complex um, roots, you get two solutions. Y1 is cosine of t, and then Y2 is sine of t, okay? And the solution, which means the solution to the homogeneous equation, that is this part, is just given by this, where C1 and C2 are constants, okay? So this is straightforward if you look at um, the, um, the previous videos. And so by the method of variation of parameters, let the particular solution be given by this. Some function W1 of T, well, it could be V1, or you can choose whatever variable, right? Let it be W1T multiplied by one of the solutions, cosine of T. Instead of C2, let it be W2, a function of T times sine T. Okay, so this is a particular solution. Now that I write my particular solution in this form, I need to solve two equations simultaneously, right? W1 prime cosine of t, W2 prime sine t equals zero. And then the second one is now you prime, you find the derivative of each of the terms in, the, in here. So you have W1 prime, now you need to differentiate these two. That gives, gives you negative sine of t. You also have W2 prime, now you have to differentiate this sine of t that gives you cos t. And this is equal to F of t over A. Our f of t in this case is the right-hand side, which is set t. Our a is just one, right? So f of t over one over a will just be set t over one. So that is why I have set t over one here. If you like, it's just set t. So really the main crust of the variation of parameters is how to solve these simultaneous equations for W1 and W2. Basically that is it. If you're able to solve for W1 and W2, plug them in there and you'll have your solutions. Okay, so let's do that. How do we solve for these? I mean, this is actually uh, quite straightforward because we have sines and cosines. We can multiply the first equation by sine, right? Then we're going to have a sine squared here. And then we we'll multiply this, the second one by cosine, we're going to have a cos squared here. Then when we add them, you're going to have a sine squared and cos squared, which is one. So it simplifies stuff. Also, when you multiply by sine, this guy, you get a sine t equals t here, and you get a negative sine t equals t. So they will cancel out, and then you are able to solve for w1, w2 prime. Okay, so that, that's what we're going to do. Multiply this by sine and this one by cosine and add the two equations. When you do that, you're going to get w2 prime, and then sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to now. If you multiply by sine, this is zero, of course. And then if you multiply this by cosine, you're going to get cosine of t multiplied by sec t, right? So that's what I have here, cos t times sec t. But secant of t is the same as one over cos, cos t. So the cos and the cos cancel out and you have one. Of course, sine squared plus cos, cos squared is one. So you have w2 prime is just equal to one. w2 prime is dw2 dt, right? So you need to integrate for w2. If you integrate uh, uh, one dt, of course, you just get a t. So w2 is just equal to t. Okay, so we have solved for um, w2. Okay, the next thing is to solve for w1. Now, the easiest thing is you go back here, um, wait, here, right? We know w2 prime. If you, if you go here, w2 prime is just one. So since we know w2 prime, we can, which is one, we can just take the sine to that side that is negative sine and divide through by cosine and try to solve for W1 prime, right? And then integrate again. So if you go, if you use that, you have W2 prime will be equal to negative sine of T over cosine of T multiplied by W2 prime, but W2 prime is just one, right? So this is one. So really all you have is negative tan of T. You see that, okay? And then to get W1, you have to integrate tan of T, negative tan T. So W1 is negative integral of tan T dt. Um, if you forget how to integrate tan T, you could rewrite it as negative um, sine of T over cos T. The negative is because of this negative here, okay? Now note that if you differentiate the denominator, cosine of T, you get the numerator. Therefore, this is just ln, ln of cos T, right? So this is, this is, so basically we have, we have W1, right? And we also know W2. And so we can just plug them back into, um, into the form of our, this, the form of our homogeneous, sorry, our particular solution to get our final particular solution. So plug W1 here and put W2 there and that gives you WP. 
So if you do that, WP will just be cosine of T multiplied by ln, right? Ln of course T is uh, W1 plus W2 is T. So T times sine T. And so finally we have our particular solution, which is W, um, which is uh, YP, okay? Um, remember that uh, if you solve a non-homogeneous equation, the general solution is the sum of the homogeneous plus the particular solution. So take your homogeneous solution, which is this one, add it to this particular solution, and then you get your general solution. Okay, so that is the general solution for um, for the non-homogeneous equation that we considered. All right. So basically, that is the procedure, and that is the method of variation of parameters. Um, here are some exercises that you could try. Right, use the method of variation of parameters to find a general solution to the differential equation. This and that. All right, most of them you actually have to use um, the method of variation of parameters, like this guy, tan of 2t. This says uh, cos x squared t sine, right? Sine hyperbolic 2x. This actually you could you could decide to use variation of parameters. If you are not told to use variation of parameters, you could also use um, the method of undetermined coefficients because you have exponential here. The same with this one. You could also use undetermined, move undetermined and variation of parameters. Let's see, as well as this and that. This, you definitely have to use variation of parameters, okay? Um, and then you have the rest where you have to, um, you are told that find a general solution. So you have to decide whether you use variation of parameters or not. But from what I see here, you have to use variation of parameters, okay? Good. So you, you try some of these ones uh, and see how, how that, uh, that goes. So that br brings us to the end of the method of variation of parameters. The next video probably will cover um, um, second order differential equations with variable coefficients. Okay. Remember that in this case, what we did here was uh, looking at the method of variation of parameters where A, B, and C are constants. We'll later look at cases where A, B, and C are functions of T. They are not constants. Okay, and variation of parameters once again will come uh, into play. Okay, good. So that is um, that is the end of this uh, this video or this lecture.